Well, good afternoon, everyone. We'll begin uh, the second uh, session uh, on lessons learned in regulators' communication from past crises. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to chair this session today. We have a, an excellent uh, panel uh, of distinguished speakers who will share their valuable perspectives on communications based on their, their experiences, the cultures of their countries, and, and the structure of their regulatory body. So we'll hear about things like uh, the challenges of communicating uh, uh, sources that uh, get mixed into scrap metal, uh, dioxins, uh, something uh, probably we have not expected to hear, but I think will be a very good uh, presentation to, to share some common um, approaches to dealing with a lot of uh, crisis communications. I thought I would uh, just begin this panel with, with just a brief introduction of experiences from uh, the United States. And I wanted to give a brief one, uh, or two actually, that both deal with Three Mile Island. Uh, many of you know that Three Mile Island uh, was one of the first significant accidents in the nuclear uh, area. So that was uh, perhaps a more traditional uh, example of the need for crisis communication. And in the United States, we learned um, many lessons from that experience. Probably the most important was the need to have a single clear voice for communicating information. Uh, so after the Three Mile Island accident, we changed our system so that there would be a single person at the NRC responsible for being in, in charge of communications and coordinating the communications for the agency. Um, and I think that has been a very significant change and one that, is, that has helped us significantly. The other uh, incident that I would touch on briefly was something that happened more recently at Three Mile Island and that maybe many of you have not heard as much about. And this is what I would call a, uh, not necessarily a crisis communication issue, but it was a, a, uh, a, a communication crisis. Uh, and it's an example of the power of social media. This was in November of 2009. During an outage at Three Mile Island, they had um, uh, cut a hole in containment to replace uh, components in, in uh, Unit 1 of Three Mile Island. And there just happened to be some uh, minor issues that developed uh, as a result of, of the activities, the maintenance activities, and several workers received um, uh, some minor degree of contamination from that event. And it resulted in contamination for about 19 uh, of the workers, again at a time when the plant was shut down uh, and there was no fuel in the vessel. Uh, and they had to evacuate 170 workers from the site. Now none of this was really an emergency or anything like that, but because of the, the power of social media, one of the workers uh, who was waiting to be cleared by the uh, radiation protection individuals called one of their friends and family members to say what happened. Well, that quickly, that information quickly spread to the media, and very quickly there were news reports of forced evacuation at Three Mile Island, contamination of workers, uh, and so that became a crisis in and of itself to bring that issue back under um, some measure of, uh, of accuracy and uh, uh, um, reflection. Uh, so that involved a lot of uh, activation of our crisis communication skills. Uh, when in fact the crisis was more about the communication than anything else. So it's a unique challenge that the social media presents. So those are just a brief example of how sometimes these issues may come up in ways that we don't anticipate and don't, um, don't expect. Uh, 